Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where today we are going to answer the week-old question, was I too hard on Emily Russo? Yes, that's right, folks. Um, I got the name horribly wrong. It is just Emma Lee, and if you look at it, knowing that, it makes sense. I, on the other hand, was trying to be Fancy Pants McGinty and try to pronounce a name that I thought was a little more on the fancy side. So, um, I have a niece named Emily. does not spell her name like that. So, that left me in quite the pickle. So, um, if you recall... Um, I did an episode not too long ago that has gotten a ton of downloads called Emily Russo is exactly who you think she is. And I reached out to Emily on Instagram, heard nothing, so I went ahead and put the episode out. Bucks reached out to Emily, and she was more than happy to go on Slee Ricketts and talk about the controversy. I have listened to the episode and I have listened to The Secret Show and not only do I have more to say about this controversy but I also have more to say about the system in which we exist that this controversy could even exist, if that makes any sense. In any other time, there's a possibility that this conversation would never have happened, okay? But things are a certain way now, and for people to wishfully think that that's not the case, um... I don't think it's as much naive as it is ignorant. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So first, um, this is episode, I think, 97, which means we are only a couple episodes away, guys, from episode 100. So if you are going to send in questions, send them in. Now, a lot of you have been sending in just email questions, and that's fine. If you want to send in email questions, that's cool. I just didn't want to know if you, I didn't, I just didn't know if you guys wanted to have your beautiful pipes on the show here. Um, There are some other things happening too that are really disturbing to me, I guess, in, in the podcast world, which is basically, I, I feel Like, I am a very fucking liberal dude. Okay? But, because I, I guess, am a bit rough around the edges, I don't fucking know a better way of putting that. But I am the way I am. Okay? I'm fair as fuck, and as sweet as a fucking cavity. Okay? But... If you come at me with bullshit, I'm going to tell you that you're coming at me with bullshit, and then I will tell you why. Okay? And in the poetry world, and I'm not even, like, putting this just on academia. I'm just talking about poetry. There is this fucking ridiculous fucking thing. And I'm talking in, like, super left-wing poetry and stupid fucking conservative poetry. Yeah, I called you fucking stupid, okay? Deal with it. Like, you're not allowed to ever 
say anything wrong about anyone. Everyone's perfect. Everyone's great all the fucking time. And it's fucking stupid. All of you poets, all of you fucking, whether you're fucking academia type motherfuckers or you're just like really snooty free verse fuckers or you're fucking formal fuckers or you're the ones that write poems about Trump being like some son of God bullshit. Okay. All of you have to know that all of your friends talk shit on you all the time. All the people in your circles think that you think you're better than you really are. And they say shit about you. But when they see you, they fucking smile. Okay? So I want you to look at yourself in the fucking mirror tonight. And fucking tell me what's better. Me just coming out and saying, Oh, I don't really think this take of yours is very good. Why don't we talk about it a little bit? If that is really worse than these people that you think are your friends and colleagues who talk mad shit on you constantly. All of you fucking poets are insecure fucks. You all think your shit don't stink, but deep down inside, you're terrified that it does. So tell me what is better, me coming out and saying shit to you or people fucking lying and talking behind your back? Because either way, it, like, if you would rather live in this fucking world where you fucking wear a veil over your face and think that people really fucking like you, knock yourself out. You're a phony motherfucker. And that's probably why your poetry reads phony, too. But if you want to be a real motherfucker, come talk to me. I would love to have you on the show. And there are the reason why I'm saying it like this is because there are a lot of people I've been reaching out to to get on the show. And everyone's excited at first. And then I say, wait, wait, wait. And maybe this is my fault. Maybe I should be trapping motherfuckers. But I'm like, you know, you might want to listen to some of the episodes before you commit. So give it a listen. Then you could come back and let me know. Okay. And I give people that out. And no one has the fucking balls enough to fucking come on the show. I don't know what the fuck you think I'm going to fucking do to you. Is it because I say fuck too much? Like, Jesus fucking Christ. <sighs> so, like, I'm getting to the point now where I'm about done trying to have fucking um, useful conversations about anything artistic with the fucking pansy-ass fucking pussy fucking artists that are out there right now. They are so fucking afraid of their own shadow. All they want is fucking praise all the motherfucking time. And can't handle two seconds of somebody just disagreeing with them. It's fucking stupid. And it's so sad. And if you like, if you're listening to this and you're like, because I know most of the people who listen to the show hate listen, that's fine. I don't give a shit. Thanks for the fucking downloads, you fucking cuck. Here's the thing I've been trying, like, you're gonna fucking think this is funny. I've been trying to play nice, okay? Like, episodes one through 97. No, 1 through 96. That was me trying to be as nice as possible to, like, lure some fucking people in to be able to have, like, invigorating content. But you fuckers have left me no choice. So guess what time it is? It's fucking Knives Out. I'm coming for you, and I'm going to fucking gut you. And if you want to fucking, like, debate me on anything... Or if you want to make sure your name doesn't get drugged through the mud, fucking hit me up. Because if not, I'm going to fucking eviscerate you. Because that's what I do. Okay? Because not only does my poetry fucking cut, but my fucking tongue cuts. Unlike you guys. With your fucking, like, fucking Crayola fucking poetry. Suck a dick. I'm coming. Whoo! Boy, now I'm all fucking pissed off and shit, dude. Guess what? I had no idea that's what the intro of this fucking show was going to be. Oh, shit. Emily, I'm really sorry. <laughs> Emily's probably freaking the fuck out right now. Emily, like, I'm not trying to fucking come at you right now. I actually, I have some um, good and some not so good things to say about you. I guess we could just on with the show this fucking thing now. Okay, so on with the show. If you have been listening to the show for a while, you will have definitely heard 
the episode I did with Emily, uh, not with Emily Russo, but about Emily Russo and her book Magenta, which I um, lovingly referred to as Magenta or whatever the fuck I was saying. Um, now, I know, like, th- there's some things that you guys got to fucking understand, okay? And Emily, I'm talking to you too, okay? This show is about art. It is about poetry. It is about literature. And it's also about the business of publishing, okay? But unlike all of the fucking boring ass fucking slit your wrist fucking poetry podcasts that are out there, I try to fucking entertain people. I try to fucking make this something different and something fucking fun to listen to, okay? So if you think that me, like getting a little harsh on stuff and saying things that are a bit out of step and all this other shit. You think that's me being fucked up. And this goes for everybody who's ever fucking had me talk about them on this show. Cause I know this fucking happens. Okay. It's not that this is an act by any fucking means, but I'm just not pretending to fucking be something I'm not. This is how I fucking am. If you were in my fucking kitchen right now and we were fucking drinking beer or fucking whatever, this is what life would fucking be like, okay? Again, I'm not a phony baloney motherfucker. So, like, just enjoy the fact that someone's fucking talking about you because I'm guessing that that doesn't really happen very much, okay? We're having a good time here. Okay, so if I come off a little crass or harsh, it has nothing to do with what I think about you as a person at all. I'm just going off of what I'm seeing and I'm doing it in the most entertaining way possible for my fucking audience. Okay, now I know for most poets out there, you guys know absolutely nothing about playing to the audience or even playing to a room. Or even being able to fucking read a room when you walk into it. That's why it's just like constant fucking dick sucking everywhere. And like you guys hope for the best. Jesus fucking Christ. I can't believe I have to fucking talk to you people like you're fucking children. And you don't know how to fucking exist in the fucking real fucking world. Oh my God. But maybe in your pretend fucking porcelain castles you guys fucking live in. This is what life's like. And you enjoy everyone being a two-faced fucking phony ass piece of shit motherfucker. Maybe that gets you guys off. Like, you're just like, oh, this is so great. Everyone's, like, kissing my ass. And as soon as I leave, I know they're going to talk shit. But I don't care because they said something nice to this part of my face. Fucking shit, dude. Okay. So, here's the deal. Emily goes on Slee Ricketts. Which I'm fucking super stoked she did. And when Matt told me he got her, I was like, oh, fuck yeah, dude. Ask her this and ask her this. I was just, like, really excited. I wanted to hear what the fuck she had to say. Now, if you recall, she wrote... Okay, what happened with the magenta thing? She was rolling around in the dirt with some people who were kind of dirty. And what happens when you do that? You get some dirt on you, okay? The publisher for her upcoming book, Magenta, um, asked her to explain herself... And she said, according to her article, how fucking dare you, sir? I will not explain myself. Something along those lines. Okay. Great. And then she went on this fucking tirade about purity, policing, and poetry. Super fucking alliteration. And, um, but like Matt said in the fucking, uh, Slee Ricketts episode, like, surely... She didn't come up with that title. And she said, that's right, but don't call me Shirley. I'm Emily. Um, So, whatever. But her whole thesis for her piece was that she should not have to fucking explain her affiliations. Okay? She goes on Slee Ricketts and says, well, I actually did. So... This is where I'm having a very huge problem with Miss Russo here, okay? She wrote this article, 
And it, on the Slee Ricketts podcast episode, she seems very pleasant, very nice person to talk to, the whole fucking thing. But the fact that she wrote this article in a way that she wrote it for the magazine Compact, who's like, I'm assuming target audience is right wing fucking nut jobs, um, since like they have like, sub top like subcategories like hashtag wokeness has hashtag cancel culture go back to the episode it's a fucking shit show going through all the fucking articles they have on that so she writes this article in a way that totally panders to that fucking audience totally and then what does she say on fucking slee rickets oh well i actually did explain myself i said this and i said that and then i wrote back and i said this and she wasn't being shitty about it she was just saying it so here is the fucking thing emily listen to me the first impression i got of you was from that ridiculous shit show fucking article on compact other than that i know fucking jack shit about you the second thing I've got from you was your admission to basically not being honest in the thesis of the last article. Okay? So, what does that tell me about you? I'll let you figure this one out. Okay? Because if you ran into somebody who did something like that, I'm sure you would have a very strong opinion of what you think of that person. Okay, so moving right along, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the podcast. I'm not going to play it on my podcast, but I'm going to play it and listen to it because there's a lot of things that are said. And one thing I fucking hate more than anything on the face of the goddamn fucking planet is when you ask someone a simple question and then they start giving you some big crazy analogy and then start quoting motherfuckers who died 150 fucking years ago or some fucking bullshit. Emily. The reason why people are getting fucking irritated, or at least why my contingent is irritated, is because you won't answer a fucking question. Life is not a circular reasoning jerk-off. Questions deserve answers. Someone asks you a question, you give them a simple answer. Then that person can ask a follow-up question. But you, like, pontificating on every fucking thing on the planet helps absolutely nothing this is a lovely episode to listen to it is um 119 on slee rickets and the secret show episode is really good too but um my subscription ran out and i haven't changed the card yet so we're gonna go over some of this stuff and then i have some notes from the secret show episode that i did listen to that i could kind of go back and forth on but let, let me let me hear some of this fucking shit here okay so she says when the editor hit her up and asked her to explain herself. She felt it was an accusatory tone. I want this to be really fucking clear to everyone on the fucking planet, okay? Publishers are not obligated to put your fucking book out, okay? Whether you have an agreement or not, a contract or not, a publisher does not have to put the book out their main focus is their readership. And if something you have done or partaken in is causing an issue with the people who are in their readership, your head is going on the chopping block and it's nothing personal. So when someone comes to you and fucking says, can you explain yourself? Just fucking explain yourself. But for some reason, Emily feels that that's fucking beneath her. So my question is, who the fuck is Emily Russo? Who does she think she is that she doesn't have to fucking do this? Because I have to answer for shit all the fucking time. Most people fucking do. The only people who think they don't are privileged motherfuckers. So when you come out and you do this fucking article and you do fucking podcast interviews and shit and you fucking act like, th like 
that it's totally beneath you and how dare someone fucking ask you for something like that? It makes you look like a privileged fucking jerk. Like, I don't understand why you think that this is... Okay, I'm gonna... I'm gonna... Okay. Because I feel like I've already done a lot of this shit. And we're gonna... We're gonna get into some pretty juicy fucking shit here. Because... Because, um... Bucks is like fucking... The driver of the fucking city transit here in a little bit on me. (laughs) Oh, shit. Okay, hang on, hang on. So she said she did kind of explain myself. And I think she just said that she politely declined to do so. And I don't remember if it said she politely declined or not. Like, being polite about it, yes or no, doesn't fucking matter. The fact that you think you're above question is, like, that's the fucking issue here. The fact that you think you don't ever have to fucking do anything like that. She says, as an artist, she will talk to whoever she wants. I fucking agree 100%. Emily, hear me out. If you would have just fucking said that in your fucking article that you were using to pander to right-wing lunatics, I would have given you a big fucking high five, and I would have been telling everyone that they're a bunch of motherfuckers for fucking you over. But you didn't say that. You acted like you were some fucking princess who isn't allowed to ever be questioned. But I agree 100% with that statement. I have a fucking interview coming up soon with a guy who I don't agree with anything he fucking said on the fucking interview. But it was an interesting discussion. People are allowed to have conversation. That's what fucking separates us from the beasts, let's say. Okay, so let's, let's hear what else this is. She said she never tried to hide her associations. Which is fine. And it it wasn't like that hard to figure out because she eventually got caught. So, yeah. This is a line she says in here. And this really fucking irritates the fuck out of me. She says she doesn't feel the need to be her own defense attorney. Okay. So, my question for you is, then who the fuck's going to be your defense attorney? Little fucks like me, we have to be our own defense attorneys. Okay. But when you say something like that... And whether or not... I don't know anything about you, okay? I just know what you have shown me, okay? So these are assumptions I'm making based off of words you have used to describe yourself and situations. But when you say you don't think you need to be your own defense attorney, that sounds like it's because you would rather have someone else be your defense attorney or something like that. Like, if you can't stand behind the things that you say or do, why the fuck do them? Like, why do anything if you can't defend those things? It just, it sounds so weak and phony. Okay, so here's another thing. The editor that reached out to her was someone that she had never really spoken to before. Or maybe one time. And so she didn't feel like she needed to defend herself to some lowly editor. Because she has someone who she's made a friend with over there now. But the friend was the one who said, yeah, we're not putting your book out. Okay. So this sounds like a classist fucking bullshit fucking thing. That you think you're better than the fucking editors at the place that's going to put your fucking book out. Now, again, I may be totally fucking off base. But I also know you have a hard time fucking being your own defense attorney. So I know this is a conversation that you and I will probably never fucking have. But you have to understand that normal fucking people who live in the real fucking world will hear you and think these things of you. But maybe in the weird poetry world that you live in, where everything's fucking really sheltered and everyone wears kid gloves and everyone just like worships the ground everyone else walks on, this is kind of like a weird fucking thing. So I don't fucking know. Okay, so Matt asks a great question here. He says, do you think if that first editor that you're like friends with, like was the one who asked you the question that this would have worked out different? And she says the vibe would definitely have been different, but she doesn't know like what it would be. So, again, because she's not going to defend herself, although she did defend herself. 
like in the compact article, she didn't because she was standing her ground. But in actuality, in emails, she was trying to state her case. So whatever. It was not polite. And then she says she didn't ask them for a full dossier of their affiliations before she decided to publish with them. Well, maybe you fucking should. Because then maybe you would have said, oh, wow, these people seem to be very far left. They might be a little upset with me fucking rummaging with the fucking alt-rights over here, you know? But again, that's something that the, like, normal poetry world doesn't want to dirty themselves with because they don't really like politics. They don't like to get into these social matters. They just want to write posy and not care about anything. Well, it's a good thing you live in a fucking country where you're allowed to fucking do that and say whatever the fuck you want. Because if you were in a lot of other countries, you wouldn't be able to fucking do the little fun thing that you like doing. Okay, so here's another thing. She says that they were accusing her of some very serious things. Some kind of McCarthyism. But guess what she doesn't do? She doesn't say what the fuck the things were that she was accused of. And she doesn't say where they would have got that idea. And she doesn't say what the fuck she said about it. What the fuck is anyone supposed to think? Just because you say something's crazy doesn't make it true. Show fucking receipts. Okay, and she said in her email, for the record, I'm opposed to fascism. So that's great. High five. Guess what? I am too. So we are already agreeing on things. But the only way people can agree on things is if both people know what the fuck both people are talking about. But this idea that you're above having to fucking say anything about anything makes it really fucking difficult. And again, I still haven't read a fucking line of your goddamn posy. I have no idea what it's like. I'm just going off of the words that you say. Okay, I'll, I'll say this right now. She was about to say what um, the magazine Compact publishes. She says, in my opinion, I'll stop there. Just fucking say what you think. Why is this so fucking difficult? And and Matt has um, a fucking horrible fucking time here. Because he says, like, well, God, weren't, weren't we talking about poetry here? The world is so fucking different than it was even fucking 10 years ago. Nothing is just about anything anymore. Everything is about everything that it could possibly be about because everyone has a voice now this isn't like it was when there was like these magazines and whatever these people say on this topic is all you need to know any moment like just in the seconds that go by and me talking guaranteed people that you think are really cool are saying something fucking stupid on twitter that will make you hate them it is the world we fucking live in so just living under a rock and saying, well, you know, this is about poetry, isn't it? No, it's not just about poetry because it's about putting books out and selling books. And this world is fucking boycott crazy now. Like if anyone does anything wrong, you get boycotted and no one's buying your shit until the next person says something fucking stupid. Nothing is just about the art anymore. And there are good ways to look at that, and there are bad ways to look at that. It's what it is. You can't just, like, put your hand in a fire, burn your fucking hand, and then go, Oh, well, that sucks. That was really hot, and it burned my hand. And then put your hand in the fire again and hope that that doesn't happen. Things constantly evolve, and where we are right now at, as a society, as a culture that consumes art... It's a package deal. It's all things. It's nothing is just about the poem any longer. And I know Bucks, me and, me and Matt have had conversations about this where he's like, you know, poems are free. Okay, well, guess what? Like, poems being free does not sell books. And I know that, like, some of the argument here is, is that a lot of these presses are funded by grants and donations, so it doesn't matter if the things sell. That's the academic vision of what the American poetry publishing complex is. But motherfuckers do need to sell books because like just in some of the research I was doing earlier in the year, 
a lot of grants and a lot of donations that a lot of places were getting are drying up. It's less and less and less. So now selling books actually does fucking matter to a lot of these places. And the best way to sell a book is to make sure the book you're putting out doesn't have a bunch of fucking bullshit attached to it from stupid fucking artists saying stupid fucking things. Emily, I'm sorry, I'm not referring to you as just a stupid person. That's not what I meant. I just meant in general. Okay, so Emily's saying now, like, the question that keeps popping up is, yeah, but where do you stand? And she's like, well, should I even have to answer that to someone in my DMs? Well, not necessarily, like, because you could have answered it in the fucking article you wrote that was supposed to, like, save face for you. Or even on this fucking podcast I'm listening to right now. I don't know why it's so fucking hard for you to fucking say something. Like, just because you write, like, what is it, metaphysical poetry or something? Doesn't mean, like, talking to you has to fucking feel like that. I mean, don't even get me started on the other. But you you understand what I'm saying. If you would have just said the thing that everyone was reading the article for in the first place... No one would be asking you this stupid fucking asinine question. But people are asking it because you wrote the fucking article. If you didn't write the article, no one would be asking you shit. But if you didn't write the article, no one would know who you are. So here's the paradox. Okay? Because I guarantee you, as sad as this sounds, more people read that article than have read your poetry. Okay? So that sucks. More podcasts are probably talking about you now than ever did because of your poetry. This all sucks, but I'm wondering if you're being really fucking coy about this to try to keep this train fucking on the tracks for a little bit longer. I don't fucking know. Because, like, one has to start asking questions when asking you a very simple question that you refuse to answer. It, it's, it's weird. So is this just a publicity stunt? I have no fucking idea. But if it is, um, I'm on board. I'm on the Emily Russo train, keeping this fucking controversy alive. (laughs) Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, Bucks, you let her off the hook. You said, "I I really don't care very much about what your personal politics are, but I'm curious about what you think about this actual topic. So just the idea of this whole thing in general. And I know that this is the kind of shit that, like, gets Bucks all excited and stuff like that. So that's fine. But it's it's just like, will someone doing an interview with Emily Russo press the fact you're sounding like a horrible politician? Answer the fucking question. It's not a hard question. Bucks, you are totally smart enough to talk about politics. Everyone is smart enough to talk about politics. Like, it seriously takes, like two minutes of research of anything and it's mainly like what do you feel like what do you think is right that's politics and then the politics part of it is like trying to get other people to believe your side okay which is why the republicans have no fucking policy and all they're doing is just trying to make people angry and want to hate other people That's their entire platform because they have absolutely zero policy except cutting Medicaid and Medicare and Social Security. Oh, well, we're not actually going to do that. Oh, but we are doing that. Oh, okay, got it. And um, going after Hunter Biden and whatever. It's such a fucking shit show. Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, here's the thing. You don't have to do a disclaimer if you say. Okay, and just so for those of you who don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. They're talking about how, like, it seems like you have to put a disclaimer at the beginning of everything to say, like, what your affiliations and beliefs are before anyone reads any further so they know, like, where you stand on something. And my argument is, is if you're having a fucking um, open and honest discussion with somebody, your views and your thoughts and your beliefs should be very obviously seen in the conversation that you're having. And to me, when people hide shit, there's a reason they're hiding shit. Okay? And if that's not true, then let's take a bunch of, I don't know, millions of years of human nature and throw it out the window. 
Okay. But the only reason why someone hides something is if they have something to hide. Okay, this is so fucking stupid. This is so fucking stupid. Emily, 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 dude. Okay, so the chain of events was somebody wrote the publisher and said, I can't believe you're publishing this person because of this, this, and this. The publisher then writes an email to Emily saying, hey, can you explain yourself for this, 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 and this? And she doesn't want to do it. Okay? And then instead of talking about that, this, like, just made her think about, like, like the culture that we live in, that this is an okay thing to do. Let's completely take all of the focus off of me for doing something stupid and being fucking afraid to fucking talk about it and start looking at the bigger picture here. This is why people are pissed off at you, Emily. I don't know what the fuck you think you're trying to do, but this is the problem. Answer questions when asked questions. Or, better yet, when you're in situations with people that are shitty fucking people, make it clear in those situations that you don't agree with them. Or anything else. This isn't hard. It was interesting to her. They wanted her to apologize, and she didn't want to do that, and she didn't want to be silent. So she wrote an article where she lied. And, like, totally pandered to right-wing lunatics. And she didn't want to name names because she wanted to make it a larger issue. If you didn't want to name names, why did you put your name on the fucking article? Why didn't you put it out anonymously? If you were really trying to not name names. Because I'm sure a few Google searches could have figured out who the fuck you were talking about. So you, like, fucking subtweeting the fucking publisher in a shitty fucking article that you obviously lied in in your thesis does not help you at all. She said it was petty. Okay, and she won't even say how she feels about it. So after she put her fucking, like, weak-ass hit piece out on Compact, the publisher then decides that they need to make a statement now because Emily has drawn attention to this. This, like, social like problem that we're having as a group instead of just like this was a you problem that you could have fixed so then the publisher posts this fucking thing stating their side of the story and she's about to say how it made her feel and what she thought of it and then she stopped and she's not going to say what that is because that doesn't matter why does it not matter this whole thing is about you so why the fuck does that not matter okay so this is funny she says you know and then there were some people who really like unpacked the article in really smart ways but then there were some others that was just like mean okay so let me get this straight in order for someone to do something in a smart way they have to fucking agree with you okay that's privilege and in order for you to think someone's just being mean they just have to disagree with you that's privilege you are very privileged oh wow There's a part in this fucking episode where Emily Russo all of a sudden understands the marketplace and understands, like, (laughs) advertising and all this other shit. But, like, she couldn't understand that when they were asking her to explain herself. That's that's shocking. That's shocking. Market-based decisions. Wouldn't it be funny? Check this out. Because she's just saying, like, you know, they liked my book. They just didn't like the fact that I was hanging out with these people. And the book was already up for pre-sale. Wouldn't it be fucking funny if all of this was just like a smoke screen and they really didn't love her book and it wasn't doing good on pre-sales so they were just looking for any way out they could get. What a tangled web we weave. That would be... Ugh, yeah. that, That would be a thing. Okay, this is so fucking ridiculous. She's... I don't even know how much more of this I can handle. Like, this is getting stupid. So she already said that she believes that this is based on optics and the market. And so, like, she understands that, allegedly. But she says it feels really finger-pointing because, like, are they implying that, like, they haven't been around any... Um, questionable people and she has like they think they're better than her or something like that what the fuck are you talking about 
None of this has anything to do with anything else. The book publishing industry is not a fucking charity, even though it, some of it is ran by grants and fucking donations. But the fact that you like have this idea in your head that because they liked your book at one point, that like you've been fucked because of this, they could do whatever the fuck they want. They could have printed out a thousand copies of your book and lit them on fire if they wanted to, because that was their thing with their name on it. They could do whatever the fuck they want. So that was an anti-poetry, anti-humanness approach that she thinks they took. I'm going to give, like, believe it or not, I'm going to give Emily some credit here in a little bit. So just hang tight. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me say this, too. Um, Emily wrote another article, and if you want to read it, just go listen to the sub, uh, sub stack. The Slee Ricketts episode, where she starts talking about wearing QR codes on your forehead, you know, because that's usually the next step in a conversation when somebody asks, hey, can you explain the fact that you're hanging out with all these alt-right lunatics? And then suddenly you're wearing a QR code on your forehead and we're talking philosophy. Okay? Fucking ridiculous, dude. I can't. I can't with her. Emily, I can't. If you ever want to come on the show and talk like a normal human being who speaks in normal human speech, I would love to talk to you about this. But all of your fucking rabbit trails and analogies, like, does absolutely nothing for anybody. Because all it shows is your ability to dodge a question. That's it. It's not about making a list of who's acceptable and who's not. Like, you can run around with bad motherfuckers. And I'm calling them bad because I'm calling them bad. Who gives a shit? That's my fucking opinion, okay? So you're running around with these people. If you don't agree with the things they say, just say it. Why is that such a fucking, like, tarnish on your fucking soul? Or, better yet, when you're in these situations with these people, speak up against them, especially if it's on a fucking podcast... So people know that you're not agreeing with horrible people saying horrible shit. Like there's like you don't need a fucking analogy for that. Okay, let me let me make this really fucking simple for you. Okay? Because it, at this point in the episode, Bucks and Emily are going back and forth trying to like understand or explain why it is that someone should have to state what their beliefs are at the beginning of a piece so people can understand their viewpoint as they read it. I honestly think the only reason why people do that shit is because there's only so much time in the day and every stupid motherfucker with a fucking degree thinks that their shit don't stink and deserves fucking substack readership. Okay? So, like, you do that so you're, like, kind of, like, going through the chaff, you know, to where you don't need to fucking... Like, read every stupid fucking ridiculous article. Okay? But at the end of the day, the only thing that should matter is people should know what kind of person you are by your fucking actions and by the things you say when you speak to people. It's really fucking easy. But in order to do that, you have to actually take a stand every once in a while. And not turn everything into a philosophical debate. I can't. I fucking can't. Um, Emily says she doesn't want to, like, prove to people that she's right. And then quote some chick who said, all my critics are right. Knowing a lot of quotes does not give you an excuse to not have individual thought. Like, you need to actually say things. And just, like, going down a list of, like famous quotes or philosophers you like does not change the fact that for the most part you still haven't fucking said anything this is a bad idea oh that is some fun wordplay she says just because someone says i denounce the alt-right doesn't mean that that person is alt-right i don't know if emily knows what the word denounce means or at least what the social implications of using the word denounce means so this is just a bunch, like seriously, I'm not trying to say anything shitty about Emily, but like, I, I feel like I'm listening to one of Trump's lawyers talk. 
Like, this is just gobbledygook salad. Okay, this is so funny. Like, she's complaining about the hashtags that Compaq put on her article. And kind of like, well, like, they put, like, wokeness and cancel culture on there, you know? Like, but that's not what I wrote, you know? And then she says, I think we need to be better readers. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question. If I picked up a book and on the front of the book it said Holy Bible and I opened the book up and started reading in it, would I be an idiot for assuming that the things I would find in there are Bible verses? Would that be a stupid fucking thing for me to think? You're on a fucking website whose whole purpose is to, I guess, just piss people off. The whole reason why your book deal didn't go through was because of that website and your involvement in it. And then you write a fucking article that ended up being called Purity Policing and Poetry with those hashtags. I'm not trying to be a dick right now, but what the fuck did you think people were going to fucking think when they read that fucking article? How dense are you? And then you blame the readers for you not being fucking clear? And you blame the readers for you putting a fucking article like that in that fucking magazine? You are fucking delusional. The idea that you even thought, maybe, that you wouldn't get any fucking flack for this? Astronomical. Like, th there should have been a fucking hashtag on your fucking article. Hashtag self-awareness. Because you fucking need some. And I, I don't understand how you think that everyone in the world is wrong except the people who agree with you on this. Okay, so this is great. She just said, This is part of ethics, admitting our own evil. That would be an interesting outcome of cancel culture if everyone started talking about their evils. You still haven't done that! What part of this are you not getting? She's not opposed to make the world better. They didn't not publish your book in the name of liberation and safety. They didn't publish your book because they were afraid it wasn't going to sell and that it would damage the reputation of the publishing house. That's it. Oh, another quote. Doesn't like prosecutions. I wonder what that means. Mm. Oh, now she's quoting the violence of positivity. That doesn't make sense. It's a fucking stupid argument that... Oh, my fucking God. So that was the end of that episode. Then there was some other shit on the uh, Secret Show episode, which is also very good. But I will say this. Buck said, um, he was talking about me, and he, he's like, yeah, you know, he's a teddy bear, you know, but on the mic, he could be like a like a real jerk. And he fucking laughed about it, you know? And so, I, I, I mean, I'm not fucking mad about it. Like, I know how I am on here, but I also know I'm a fucking good-ass motherfucker. So, Emily, just so you know, because I know you're kind of um, astrology-based or whatnot. I'm a Pisces with a Leo rising and a Taurus moon. So if that helps you understand how to communicate with me as I go through this with you, I, I hope that works. So me being a Pisces means I'm just going to get all emotional and cry, think about all this other shit. But I'm also an old soul, so I have like zero tolerance for dumb fucking bullshit. So there's that. Uh, let's see... So this was something that was said in The Secret Show. Um, or was not on this? I don't even remember now. But it was like the idea of if being on a podcast means you endorse that podcast. And that's, that's just ludicrous. I mean, there are like Republicans who show up on MSNBC to be interviewed. People want to know what people's like beliefs and thoughts are about things what makes them tick and when two people disagree on something if they could have a civil fucking discourse that makes for good entertaining thought-provoking viewing now some of you might be listening to this episode and going how the fuck could anyone have a civil fucking conversation with you you piece of shit and if you've gone back to listen to any of my interviews i treat my fucking interview guests with so much fucking respect, it's disgusting. Okay? But again, if they say something that I don't think is true or accurate, I will ask them about that. I, I still don't think she did any denouncing, but according to her, the word denounce doesn't mean anything, so that's fine. 
and then some philosopher said something sometime which means nothing means anything and everything's meaningless so why bother to do anything at all whatever who gives a shit and then they did something and i think bucks fucking made this a bigger thing than she did but she was talking about i think this podcast and the episode i did and she said that she thought that maybe i was going after her because she was a woman like fucking back catalog I go after dudes all the fucking time. The episode right after that episode I did was me going after a dude. So don't fucking flatter yourself and think that I'm just coming at you because you're a chick. Okay? Um, And then uh, Buck said, well, maybe I like her. You know, pigtails in the inkwell. And she didn't know what the fuck that meant, which is hysterical. Um, But anyway, so what we're going to do right now, I'm going to fucking Google this chick and see if... I'm doing this because I like her. So I don't like to throw the male gaze onto chicks, but since this came up, now I gotta see. Come on, you piece of shit. Let's see this. Uh, No, I don't think so. I don't think that this is a thing of me trying to flirt because in case you guys don't know this i'm charming as fuck and if i want to woo somebody i know how to fucking do it aka i'm a fucking poet so i understand how to fucking do this shit so me fucking like coming out at somebody who said a bunch of dumbass shit is not my go-to way of trying to bed someone okay so like let's get that thought out of everyone's mind too and at the end of the day like I remember, because I, I did look her up on the last episode. Like, I like recognized her when, when she came up here. But I remember when I looked for her before, it was really hard to find her. Like, there was a bunch of stuff that I was, like, going through trying to just get to wherever the fuck she was. Because, again, um, a few months ago, nobody knew who the fuck she was. And now, because of all this shit, she is being Googled a lot more. And um, I wipe my cookies... So, um, she popped right up. So, at least in the Google sphere, Emily Russo is doing quite well with the controversy surrounding her affiliations. I would say her book, but it's not because of her book. It's her affiliations. Now, the plus side, the, the, the back pat I'm going to give Emily here, is that she put her book out for free. So, you could just get the book now. So if any of you out there want to, like, check this book out and see what her work's really like, um, down below I'm going to leave a link to the Slee Ricketts episode. So just go over there, show them some love, show Matt some love, and um, listen to his show, and all the links for all the shit will be there. But this just goes back to the whole thing. Like, if you're so fucking worried about if your book's going to be able to come out because of the fucking people you hang out with, fucking self-publish. Like, you guys say it all the time. Nobody buys poetry books. Nobody reads fucking poetry. If that's the case, what does it matter if no one's reading a book that got put out by a fucking small press or a university press or someone not reading a book that you put out yourself? If no one's reading the book, what the fuck does it matter? At least if you put the book out yourself... You don't have to worry about all that extra shit. And you can just do whatever the fuck you want. You could roll around in the dirt with whatever stupid motherfucker you want. You could fucking think that Trump, the election was stolen from him, all you fucking want. You could think all the stupid, ridiculous fucking thoughts you think. Okay? And still put your book out to an audience of no one. Okay? And and you will come out unscathed. All right? So, I'm fucking annoyed and tired talking about this, but I will say, Emily, if you would ever want to come on this show and talk about this stuff, I would love to talk to you about this. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you do, I'm going to make you talk simply and answer questions simply. No metaphors, no analogies, no fucking quoting some dead fuck. I want to know what you think about certain things. Because that's what's important here. I don't give a shit how many quotes you could fucking throw at me. I don't give a shit about whatever fucking QR code fucking bullshit you came up with and you think is interesting. 
I just want to know what you think about stuff. So if that is something you would like to do, I would love to have you on here and I will treat you with the utmost respect. And I will even send you a list of people that I've interviewed before that will tell you that coming on my show was a breath of fresh air on an otherwise smoggy ass fucking day. Okay, let's just get into the fucking butt plugs. I'm fucking annoyed now. Okay, welcome to the butt plugs. I want to give the shout outs to the motherfucking shout outs. So I want to give a big thank you to my motherfuckers over there on Patreon. I want to give a thank you to Michael, to Cedar, to Harry, to Monse. You guys are awesome. Thank you. And then for you sweet, sweet, badass mamma jammas in the YouTube thank you crew, I want to give a big thank you to Patrick, to Britt, to Jan, to Deb, to Ethan, to Julia, and to Lauren. You guys are fucking awesome. Let's give a thank you to the Anarchy crew here. So let's give a thank you to Bunny, to Nate, to Minnie, to Thomas, to Tim, J, to Shaylin, to Tim, G, to Chill Baby, to Tamara, to Adam, to Chase, to JH, to Jessica, to Jason, to Jeff, and our newest Anarchy Crew member, Cedar. Thank you, Cedar. And then, over there, in the chat book of the month club, we gotta give a big thank you to the number one chappy over there, Caitlin. Thank you so much. Now, um, make sure you run out and go pick up On the Beach. Links will be down below. This is my new chapbook for this month, and I don't have a copy of it right here, but Bloodshed Review, Issue 3, out now with a chapbook by Jeff Taylor and poems by Adam Crawford and Tamara Albana. So, with all that said, type hard, everybody. And I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.